Well, good morning, Watermark. Thank you so much for joining us online this morning. I hope you had a very Merry Christmas and you're getting ready to have a Happy New Year. And as you can tell, we're not in our usual location this morning, and that's because Watermark Dallas is not meeting in person today. However, we have a special surprise for you guys. We're going to show one of our favorite messages from the archives. And Jermaine said a special surprise, and here's what's really surprising, guys. This morning's message is only 13 minutes long, but it is an incredible message. It's packed full of truth, hope, encouragement, and inspiration to send you into 2021. I'm confident you're going to be encouraged. And guys, we'll be back next weekend, January 3rd, live and in person, and we hope to see you there too. Until then, have a great week of worship. Hag Mao. That's have a great morning of worship. Yes. Have that too. We'll see you soon. Watermark Dallas, Fort Worth, Plano, those of you who are streaming online, today we are going to be wrapping up the Better Together series with myself, Adam Tarno, and Todd Wagner. So, welcome. Today I've brought in this box that I have a love-hate relationship with what is inside of this box. I love it because I need what is in this box, and yet I hate what is in this box because I also need it. What might be inside, you wonder? This little beauty. This is my iPhone charger that I keep by my bed. This one is essential because my phone dies daily to 0%. I've got an old iPhone 5, and so this is the one that's plugged into all night. I don't just have that one. This is the one that my uh, wife requires me to keep in my car because oftentimes when I'm out running errands, my phone dies. I've got both kids. She's like, where are you? I need you. You've got to keep a charge on your phone. Uh, this one is crucial. This one, see, normally by noon on any given workday, I'm at like 29% at noon. I know, it's insulting. Um, so this is the little small pocket size one. You're like, that's standard issue. No, this is the crucial one that I will take from meeting to meeting all throughout my day at Watermark. I actually choose seats based on where there is an outlet so that I can remain plugged in. Um, this one, this my in-laws for the last three Christmases have given me iPhone chargers, just in case you think I'm not serious. I got this one in my stocking stuffer this year, uh, uh, which is nice because it doesn't tangle, except for the fact that it didn't come with a plug. So I'm like, that's just t a tease. Like, what you, why would you do that? This one is a huge source of conflict in our life. Me and Laura, our home, uh, this one stays in the kitchen. That's right, we have to have one in the kitchen because one room is not enough. When I come home every day from work, she'll be plugged into this. I'll tap her home screen. I'm like, are you kidding me? 54%? That's selfish. Get off of there. I'm at 19. <laughs> the reason why I tell you about my iPhone woes is because this thing doesn't hold a charge. And it's a common pain. We all know it. In fact, there was a worship song that I think was in part inspired by this common pain of iPhone chargers. It's I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour, I need you. <laughs> I was gonna mess that up next time you sing it. You're gonna be thinking about your phone. But I think that's a good thing that it will cause you to think about your phone because all of us, as followers of Christ, require a spiritual charge, power from Jesus to us all throughout the day. We require it as Christ followers, that we're receiving our power from God. We don't have it in and of itself. We've got to remain plugged in to the source that is Christ. And I'm telling you about that today during Better Together because one of the core values, in fact, the first core value of community here at Watermark that the elders have proposed is that it is to devote daily. As Christ followers, we must devote daily. You'll see out of the six values of community, it is foremost, and it's there intentionally, because if we are not devoting daily, remaining in and abiding in Christ, we won't even be able to do the other five that are there, because it is from him, the source, that we are able to accomplish all that we are intended to do by the Lord. And so today we're going to be talking about devote daily as one of the core values of community, and we're going to cover this, the misconceptions, the reality and the solution. So let's talk about misconceptions first. Who here in the audience has a smartwatch? Any smartwatches in the audience? You raise that hand with pride, that's right. Well, a smartwatch requires a frequent charge, right? Well, let me tell you about my watch. This bad boy right here, 
This was $13 on Amazon, shipping included, and it has a 10-year battery. This thing's gonna run till 2027. That's what I call a smart watch. 13 bucks, 10-year battery. I don't know how they're making any money. But the reality is, is that your watch is smarter than mine. This thing tells the time and can beep on the hour. Like, congratulations. Not a very smart watch. Your smart watch can do a ton of different stuff, which is why it demands a frequent charge. Now, a lot of us think that we have a lifetime charge like my watch. You think, well, I trusted Christ when I was nine years old, I was baptized, I was sealed with the Spirit, my eternal salvation is fixed, and therefore, I'm just going about my business, I'm gonna get my work done, I know how to manage relationships and money, I don't need to walk with God, he made me incredibly wise, I'm winsome, I'm likable, I can get life done. And you think that you somehow have a lifetime charge just because your eternity is fixed. It's not the case, none of us have a lifetime charge. You're much more like that smartwatch than you are my cheap watch. It's not just my words, it's Jesus' words. The elders have chosen John 15, five to go along with the value of devote daily. It says this, Jesus says this, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit, but apart from me, you can do nothing. Now Jesus will remain in us if we have trusted in Christ, but we do not have a lifetime charge. We also have to remain in him in order to bear that fruit. Apart from him, you can do nothing. And you think, well, I can do things apart from Jesus. You maybe can, but they are not spiritual, eternal fruits that matter for the kingdom of God. For those, you must remain in him. You don't have a lifetime charge. The other misconception is that you have a limited charge that is sufficient. You think a limited charge in your day would be sufficient. This would be the equivalent of if I had my iPhone, which does die daily, every day, this thing will go to 0%, screen black, and I am totally rendered incapable of what I need to do in my marriage, my relationships, my work, my finances, it just shuts down. Because a limited charge is insufficient. If this thing was totally dead, and I took one of these chargers and left it in there for 15 minutes, how long would this be good for? You know it would maybe turn back on and go to 7%. And I would try to do my remaining functions on that 7%. And after that, it wouldn't have any strength. It wouldn't have any power left anymore. It's the same thing if we try to do our day based on the limited charge, thinking that a limited charge would be sufficient. This would be like having a quiet time, maybe a join the journey for 15, 30 minutes, and then you think, well, that's enough for the day. And you go about your day. At some point in time, God's power in you is going to run out. You're gonna operate on God's power for a little bit, but unless you're charged throughout the day, getting these charges from God, it is going to be insufficient. You can't just have a 15 minute quiet time and expect that to carry you through the day. That is a misconception. The other problem is a lot of times we're doing this and then it's like we switch it on to airplane mode and we have nothing outbound to God for the rest of the day and we have nothing incoming from God. It's on airplane mode because we think, well, that quiet time was sufficient and they are good, they're just not sufficient. And so we've gotta leave our phones, get continual charges throughout the day and not have it on airplane mode. Those are the misconceptions, what is the reality? The reality is, is that we have got to give God precedence daily, throughout the day, not just in the morning or the evening, but throughout the day. Precedence is a fancy word for priority and preference. Now let me explain it to you this way. The only other person that I am in covenant relationship with, aside from my Lord and Savior Jesus, is Laura, my wife. So because I am in, uh, she has precedence in my life, and because I'm in a covenant relationship with her, she has priority and preference, which means when I'm at work, And she calls, even if I'm in a meeting, well, if she calls, I'll take the call if I can. If I'm in a meeting, I will immediately send her a text and be like, hey, sweetheart, I'm in a meeting. Do you need me to step out or is everything okay? 99 out of 100, she's like, oh, it's great. I was just checking in. There's also this frequent text lob throughout the day. It's not just one in the morning, but continually throughout the day so that we stay in communication. There's usually a FaceTime with me and the kids and a couple of pics sent back and forth. There's this continual communication and conversation throughout the day that I'm staying in touch with her, not because I have some to-do list that says, call Laura in the morning, call her in the afternoon, text throughout the day. It's not a to-do list. It's because I love her and I'm in a relationship with her. Now, it's the same in our relationship with God. Those touch points are all throughout the day. In fact, just like if you checked my phone history and you would see an ongoing dialogue with Laura, 
it should be the case with all of us in our spiritual walk, that at the end of the day, you should be able to, you know, in theory, click on like spiritual history and see like time in the word, worship song on the way to work, engaged God in my work. There was prayer throughout here, prayer at the meals, engaged God in a conversation with a coworker, and there should be that spiritual log throughout this conversation. Because you can imagine, what if my, what if my marriage, if I said, hey, Laura, I'm only gonna talk to you from seven to 7.30 in the morning, and after that, we're not gonna talk anymore. What would be the quality of my marriage? It would diminish pretty quickly. We would have a lot of confusion, even conflict. There would be separation there. Still be married, but there would be a breakdown in communication. It's the same thing whenever we don't stay in that constant communication with the Lord. That's why Ephesians 5.18 says, be filled with the Spirit. We're sealed when we trust Christ, but there's a filling which is an ongoing, present tense, continuous throughout the day as we are being connected and charged all throughout the day. Now, if the misconceptions or that there is a lifetime and limited or insufficient, the reality is we're to give God precedence throughout the day, then how do we do that? That feels kind of intangible, so let's, let's put some ideas towards that. Here's how we do this. The solution is to be connected to God's power, to be connected to God's power all throughout the day. Some simple ways that that can be done is to be connected to God's power through P, prayer. Now prayer, we're told in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, to rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. That's not a cosmic to-do list from God. Instead, he's saying, I want you to stay in continual communication with me so that you can bear fruit. This is a love relationship and you will draw your power to bear eternal fruit through that relationship with me. That's how we draw powers, through prayer. The other word, W, worship. Whether it's a worship song in the morning, maybe you turn off that talk radio, sports radio, and instead are filling your mind with spiritual truths put to music that will get stuck in your head, as Todd's journey entry told us. Or maybe that W for worship isn't a song, but instead it's your work, whether it's changing a diaper, overseeing and teaching junior high students in the classroom, or preparing taxes. Your work can become worship all throughout the day just by bringing God into that, saying, God, I need your wisdom, I need your power, I need your insight. I want this to be a sacrifice of worship to you as I do what you have given me to do today. The R is reading, spending time in God's word. We are told, in Hebrews 4.12, that his word is living and active, meaning that this will be a conversation from God through the word to you as the spirit can discern those thoughts through the word into your mind. He will speak through his word, and not only that, call them to remembrance. Like right now, we're doing the six-week challenge to remember Psalm 1, to put it in our minds so that the spirit would bring that back to our mind as we're going throughout the day, reading and remembering. That is how we can remain connected to God's power. These power sources throughout the day, prayer, worship, and reading. Now this past week, I was out of town on our annual staff retreat in which we plan for the year, get some time away together to really refocus on the Lord and the goals. Um, and during that time, something strange happened. My wife, back here in Dallas, receives a text from an unknown number that says, hey baby, how are you? What are you up to, sweetheart? Yeah, his eyes just raised. Mine would have done the same thing, except that text was from me. My phone had died yet again, and so I had to reach over to my buddy, Jeff Ward, beside me, and I'm like, bro, can I borrow your phone? He's like, why? I'm like, my phone's dead, I gotta text my wife. Because I was gonna tell her, hey, I, I'm not gonna be able to call you tonight. My phone's out of power. And I think that I'm not unique in that. My iPhone is not unique in that. I think a lot of us are running out of gas, out of energy throughout the day because we are not staying connected to God's power and thus we cannot do what we're created to do in loving God and loving others. We've got to remain connected because if we are not individually healthy by devoting daily, then our community groups will not be healthy and our church will not be healthy. And so I am asking you, we are asking you, your community group is asking you, and God is asking you to devote daily that we would bear spiritual fruit and remain in him.